Hi guys, Sumbuhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim, your Hardinerong Kapitbahay. It's another day and another plan to discuss ano pang hinihintay mo. Tara, samahan mo ako at magkwentuhan tayo. Hi guys, Sumbuhay! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim, your Hardinerong Kapitbahay. Magandang araw mga kapuso, kapatid, kapamilya at syempre mga kapitbahay. Well, our next featured plants is actually one of my favorite plants. They're commonly mistaken as photos because of their uh, similarities in terms of the structure of the leaves um, as well as the binding behavior of the stems. But actually, they belong to the family of philodendron. This plant is called Philodendron scandens micans. Okay? This is also known as the velvet leaf philodendron, philodendron micans. And this plant is a native to the Caribbean and Mexico area, okay? So the philodendron micans are the perfect, uh, perfect small space plants um, that has a velvety heart-shaped leaves na pwedeng-pwede natin ilagay sa ating indoor. But actually, as you can see now, medyo um, nagka, makikita natin na medyo sensitive kasi ito doon sa mga, uh, mga, uh, mga corners, uh, corner areas na pwedeng magbigay ng pressure. Kaya medyo nagkakaroon siya ng mga marks doon sa kanya mga dahon. Okay? But if this plant will be left doon sa isang area na meron siyang uh, good light conditions, tapos hindi naman siya nagagalaw or hindi siya nasasanggi or hindi siya um, or hindi siya natatouch, well definitely you will have a very nice um, uh, philodendron micans. Actually this one, uh, medyo um, I came across with this one um, sa isang, uh, sa isang uh, plant shop. So, that's why I bought this one. Okay, I bought this philodendron. Okay, so the leaves can grow more than 3 inches as you can see. Yung pinakamalaki nyo, sayang nga lang naputo, napunit siya. But actually, it could, it, could, uh, it could reach primarily up to 3 inches wide and the nodes are deeply packed which makes it easy to propagate. When you say deeply packed, medyo uh, malapit-lapit sila sa bawat isa. Kumbaga. But um, it always depends on the tawag natin sa exposure ng light. If this plant is not well exposed to bright light conditions, meron tayong kinatawag na etulations kung saan medyo mas mahaba or mas nage-elongate yung kanilang mga uh, binding stems. Kumbaga. Uh, para ma-reach nila yung uh, certain con uh, light conditions pa na para sila ay mag-grow. Okay? So, um, Pilodendron micans have curling leaves that unfurl as they grow into a myriad of color depending on the amount of natural light they have. Now, aside from the etulations, which is kung saan hinahabol ng plants yung amount ng light conditions, it is also has an effect in terms of the, the colorations ng ating dahon. Okay, so makikita natin ito. Ito, pakita, pakita natin itong isang to. Okay, this one, as you can see, is actually may pagka-rusty red siya na color which means to say na kahit na paano na, 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 nagiging, uh, nakakakuha siya ng enough sunlight or enough bright light para, uh, mag, uh, para mag-project siya ng ganyang klase ng color. But if not, more or less, kung ito ay naka, nasa loob ng ating bahay and medyo kailangan niyang i-maximize yung, yung amount ng light you, this particular uh, leaf colorations will turn most probably into green color. Okay? Kasi kailangan nga niyang i-concentrate yung tinatawag nating photosynthesis process. Okay? So, they can be deep green to uh, chartreuse in terms of color. Okay? Now, what are the best practices for philodendron micans care? So, first and foremost, we have to look into the type of soil that we are going to use in in um, in growing this particular philodendron micans. Well, um, the best quality uh, for this plant uh, soil is a, of course the pla the past draining potting mix. Okay, so uh, we could use primarily uh, potting soil. Yung mga tinatawag natin mga uh, humus type of soil. Meron tayong konting peat moss and also some um, some um, yung tatawag natin perlite. Okay, perlite uh, uh, na, na medyo uh, maliliit na mga bato, kung baga. But uh, you could also devise your own soil mix. So, in this case kasi, we have here, 
yung tinatawag nating mga rice husk which is actually available lang naman uh, especially if we are if we are having uh, the the rice husk yung mga bin, binibili nating mga halaman and once we we repot it to so naiiwan yung mga rice hull na kung saan ay syempre um, pinaprocess pa natin okay or pinagpapahinga kumbaga sinaset aside natin well we could utilize that one also and we could also have what they call add up yung tatag natin mga pumice rocks and also yung mga coco wire so more or less if you are living here in the Philippines more or less uh, pwede mong gamitin yung mga indigenous na materials that we have like the rice hull the coco wire and the pumice rocks because Pumice rocks came primarily sa mga areas kung saan may mga volcano. Okay, so that is actually um, will give us an excellent results in growing our um, our mycans. Okay, um, because of the very nice fast draining potting mix. Okay, so uh, in terms of the light condition, as I've told you a while ago, these plants do well with bright light, but not direct sunlight because uh, when this plant is actually exposed to a uh, to uh, to direct sunlight, uh, we are going to experience burning, um, or we could experience yung burn ng leaves or kapag kasunog dun dahon. Okay. Now, if you're going to place this plant near the window, well, most probably we have to put it a little bit away from the window uh, window um, uh, window sill. Okay, or para um, hindi siya directly na matatamaan ng sikat ng araw. Well, of course, the philodendron will tolerate lower levels of light, but they will not thrive. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya lalago or hindi siya um, nagpuproduce ng maraming mga dahon. If we're going to keep this one in a certain place to walang masyadong um, sunlight or walang masyadong bright light. Okay? So, uh, what else? So, watering. Now, about the watering, these plants... Um, um, we have to check primarily yung kanyang watering. Okay, why? Uh, because um, we have to allow the top inch or yung one inch portion ng ating soil to dry out between watering. What do I mean by that? So, uh, para makasigura do tayo na hindi masyado maraming tubig o hindi nag nagkakaroon ng water clogging sa ating soil, um, we have to uh, make sure na yung one inch dun po from the top hanggang 1 inch dun sa ating soil ay dry na. Okay? Um, that is the time that we could be able to uh, put some water with our mycans. Now, how are we going to test if that is the right time to water the plant? Well, we have to insert a portion of our finger to the soil. And if it is dry to, to the first knuckle, which means the first knuckle natin, then it is time to water the plant. Now, if the leaves get droopy, it is usually means that the plant has been overwatered. So that is one of the reaction of the philodendron mycans once um, it is overwatered. Okay. So in order for us to fix that particular problem, like drooping of the leaves, we have to schedule or we have to fix the schedule of uh, watering the plant itself. Okay. Now, in terms of the temperature, of course, this plant is. Uh, a plant that is uh, placed or located uh, or grown um, under the yung mga malalaking mga puno, okay? yung mga bigger trees. So, understory type of plant. Okay? So, more or less, the temperature below that understory na malalaking puno is actually mga around 18 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius during the day. And of course, um, during the night, we have to maintain 16 degrees Celsius as much as possible in order for us to give justice dun sa kanyang grow para mas maganda yung kanyang growth, kumbaga. In terms of the humidity, these plants really thrive in a very humid conditions. Especially uh, here in the Philippines now, um, kailangan talaga ng mga uh, philodendron mycans ng, um, ng humid environment. Okay? So, yung if we don't have that particular humid environment, the only thing that we could use is, of course, the UDB, uh, Udemypire. Okay, if we have that at home. Pero kung wala naman, we could miss the leaves during the dry months. Okay, ano ba yung dry months sa Pilipinas? Well, most probably during the summer time. Okay, so kasi nag-change din ang ating weather conditions nowadays because of the, the global warming. So more or less, 
uh, we could be able to adjust uh, yung misting ba, uh, kung baga. Okay? So, what else? Fertilizer. This plants really need fertilizer. Okay? Especially during the time of its growing period. So, the fertilizer we have to choose con should contain macro ingredients. And uh, when, uh, what are those indications that these plants are not receiving enough fertilizer? Well, um, when you are able to observe that the plants produces small leaves and napakabagal niyang lumaki, okay? That indicate that uh, the plants really need more fertilizer, okay? Now, um, if the plants appears to be pale, okay, that means to say more or less, uh, kulang siya ng magnesium and calcium. So, this particular two ingredients is a well-balanced or should be contained in a well-balanced fertilizer. Of course, if you want to have an organic type, of course, there meron tayo mga uh, kitchen waste that contains magnesium and also some calcium. Like, for example, yung tinatawag nating mga um, eggshells, yung mga uh, dinurog pulverized na eggshells. So, we could place it here uh, as part of the soil mix that we have. Uh, dito sa ating plant. So, that, I think that will be the best thing that we could have in this particular plant. Okay? So, in terms of the propagation, this plant could be propagated through stem cuttings. Okay? So, the only thing that we have to do is to cut it in between the internodes or between the nodes itself. Okay? Uh, para mas maganda natin siyang uh, maitanim ng ayos. Okay? So, uh, in order for us, after cutting, we have to rest this uh, cuttings within a day. Para ma-heal yung mga wound na, na sa cutting, from the cutting itself. Tapos, the thing there is, we have to, um, siguro pwede natin gawin ay, ilagay natin siya sa water or a glass with some very moist soil para mag-encourage naman ng growth ng ating mga roots, kung baga. Okay? So, the roots will begin to grow quite easily and before long, the cutting uh, can be planted in a pot. So, mas madali siyang gawin. Now, in terms of the growth, um, this plant can be moved up to 8 to 12 inches tall and 24 inches wide at its mature stage. So, ganun siya kalaki. Okay? Now, how do we know that these plants are ready for the potting or pottings? Well, we have to choose a plant or we have to choose, uh, if, we're, if we're going to repot this one, we have to look into uh, the, the root system. So, titingnan natin siya. Kung ang root system niya uh, can be compacted in a ball, um, we could be able to repot it uh, to a pot that is 2 to 3 inches bigger okay, from the root ball itself. Okay, so, syempre, once we are going to repot this one, ibig sabihin, um, it really needs a bigger pot, kung baga. Pero, uh, we have to be careful in choosing the pots. Dapat ay mga around 2 to 3 inches bigger than the pot itself. So, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, the, the pilodendron mycans are quite uh, slow in terms of its growth. So, siguro matatagalan pa tayo bago nyo makitang mag ako ng aking mycan. So, more or less, siguro by propagation, I, I could show you primarily uh, the prop, uh, the way on how to propagate uh, pilodendron mycans. But that is that will be another um, another video about the pilodendron mycans. Okay? So, what else? Uh, common pests for this plant most probably uh, are aphids, mealybugs, spider mites and scales okay so um in order for us to eliminate those pests the only thing that may be the most best uh, the best thing siguro na pwede natin gamitin is the use of neem oil or other uh, horticultural oil okay so uh, if we don't have enough uh, cash or money to buy those neem oil because they are quite expensive we could use some insecticidal soap and water mix and keeps the, uh, that will keep the, the, the pest away. That is in terms of other uh, insects. Now, in terms of the mealybugs, we could use a cotton ball and a rubbing alcohol. Okay? Para uh, magkaroon tayo or para malinis natin yung kanyang infected areas. Okay? So, uh, guys, uh, this plant, although it seems to be para siyang... Um, uh, para siyang uh, mahirap or sensitive siyang alagaan. But actually, once you get, uh, uh, siguro pag, pag nakasanayan na ninyo or you're able to um, adapt to how you're going to, to, 
to grow this particular plant. I think this one is uh, also we will be the best and beautiful part of your uh, indoor plants in your uh, sa bahay ninyo. Okay? So, I still recommend to grow one of this plant sa inyong bahay because this is really a um, medyo challenging but the plant itself is quite rewarding. And I'm going to wait until this plant will grow primarily ng maraming marami. Okay? So, I think that's all folks. You're watching Planting with Epp and Grace. Please watch and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you may add to your FB, FB page si Maria Gracia Talihim Nardin um, and uh, to visit and to look for some other plants that we have uh, in our garden. Okay? So, see you again next time. If you have some comments, suggestions, or story to tell about this plant, the Philodendron Micans, we are very happy to hear from you. Okay? Thank you and goodbye! we met, I could tell by your smile, you hadn't been with a good girl like me in a while, yeah you were impressed, couldn't leave me alone, text me every time.